Department of Chemical and Material Engineering. So as we know that the, uh, am the ammonia is most commonly synthesized by Hubble brush process. Traction. And although this process has dominated the ammonium production for decay, but the problem is it is carbon intensive. First of all, the required hydrogen gas is coming from the uh, fossil hydrocarbon, which results in severe carbon dioxide emission. And Through secondly, the, uh, the, uh, the migration of the process it itself requires high pressure and high temperature, uh, which results then in we, um, we have energy intensive. So Is then the produced uh, ammonia the, the can, go, can be used in industry feedstock and fertilizer, and then go into the wastewater in the form of uh, nitrate, which is harmful for ecosystem and human beings. So uh, we can see that the entire harbor brush pro uh, process okay, uh, thank you generates uh, three big okay, issues. So okay. first one is um, it uh, uses a lot of on energy. The on the, and the uh, second uh, one, it increases carbon dioxide emission. And the third one is uh, it generates nitrate in contaminants water. Sorry, nitrate contaminants in water. So in order to overcome these problems, in my research, I propose an alternative route to synthesis ammonia di directly from the nitrate in waste, oh, sorry, from the nitrate in wastewater. So in this way, nitrate and ammonia co can form the sustainable circle with limited carbon dioxide emission. In general, uh, nitrate reduction goes through uh, the conversion from nitrate to nitrite and then to nitric oxide and then ammonia or ammonium depends on the reaction conditions. However, the, uh, the, nitric, the nitric oxide is easy to escape from the surface of the catalyst. So uh, which decrease the efficiency of the reaction and uh, the selectivity of the final products. So uh, in, in order to improve the efficiency and the selectivity, in my work, we uh, made this so-called porous catalyst, which can trap the NO intermediate, intermediates inside the catalyst and improve the performance. So in this study, uh, we use three catalysts, including uh, the foil, particle, and poros. And the poros catalyst was synthesized in my lab. The foil and particle were purchased from the supplier. So from the SEA image, we can see that uh, the surface morphology of these three catalysts are totally different. And uh, from the SRD analysis on the right hand side, we can see that these three catalysts are all from uh, copper. Then to understand the electrochemical properties of these uh, three catalysts, we uh, extend uh, these three catalysts by uh, electrochemical impedance uh, spectroscopy measurement. So uh, from the EIS measurement curve show in the left, we can um, obtain the uh, resistance for the electron transfer in nitrate solution, which okay, thank can you for be the um, obtained by the uh, touchdown point of the curve here. And we can found uh, from the result, we can see that the, co uh, the porous copper uh, catalyst has the lowest uh, resistance for electron transfer during nitrate reduction. And this argument can be supported by uh, the TAFO plot shown in the uh, right figure. And we can see that the copper porous catalyst has the lower uh, TAFO slope, indicating that uh, the overall potential for nitrate reduction is lower in copper porous structure. So uh, we use the edge cell to conduct the nitrate reduction performance of these three catalysts. Then uh, here is the resource for nitrate reduction reaction after a hour under constant current of 0.04 ampere. And uh, we analyze the nitrate conversion, selectivity, 
ammonium EO and the variety of efficiency. And from the uh, table, we can see that uh, the copper porous uh, catalysts outperform the copper particle and copper foil in all terms. And uh, the final uh, nitrate conversion can reach around 98%, and the ammonium EO can uh, reach around 93% with Faraday efficiency of 20%. So it is clear that uh, we have remarkable nitrate conversion and ammonia uh, eel, but the Faraday efficiency is unacceptable. Therefore, we change uh, the constant current reaction to the constant potential reaction. And uh, so here we selected uh, the reduction potential from, uh, from uh, sorry. <laughs> from uh, minus, point, minus 0 0.5 volt to minus 0 0.9 volt. And from the figure show on the right-hand side, we can find an optimal uh, potential, which is minus 0 0.75 volt, with uh, improve, and improving the Faraday efficiency to 58%. And we can also notice that uh, when we increase the uh, potential, the Faraday efficiency start dropping. And it is because the uh, least potential are approaching water reduction potential. Then we use the same condition to test the performance of the copper foil and copper particle. And from both figures and table, we can see that the copper porous uh, catalyst has the highest nitrate conversion, selectivity and ammonia EO and Faraday efficiency. To understand why the copper porous uh, catalyst has this remarkable uh, performance, we uh, extend the electrochemical surface area of these three catalysts from a series of side, uh, CV curve with different scan ray. So uh, we can calculate uh, the the double layer capacitance by the slope or by the slope of current density and the uh, scan ray. Then uh, we can uh, obtain the uh, roughness factor. So from the figure, we can see that it is makes sense that the copper uh, porous catalyst has the highest uh, roughness factor. Then uh, we use, uh, then we normalize the current density of the nitrate reduction reaction by calculate a roughness factor. And from the figure shown in the left, we can find uh, the normalized current density uh, drop dramatically. And uh, this result um, shows that, tell us that uh, the poro structure is a dominant uh, factor, which uh, led, um, control the nitrate reduction performance and ammonium production. Then uh, I did a comparison between our work and the copper catalyst in the literature. As the figure showing here, our, uh, our copper porous catalyst is superior than many copper-based catalysts regarding their Faraday efficiency and nitrate conversion. So in summary, I hope I have convinced you that uh, the copper porous catalyst is a promising material for, ammoni for nitrate reduction toward uh, ammonia. And the porous structure can enhance the electrochemical properties and also uh, improve the nitrate conversion and ammonia selectivity, also the Faraday efficiency. With that, I would like to thank uh, my research group uh, at Tankang University and the funding support from uh, the National Science and Technology in Taiwan and uh, Science and Technology Council in Taiwan. Thank you again for being here today and I am happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Su. Um, I think we will start with an online question, actually, and then uh, you will be allowed afterwards. So uh, there is one there. Uh, maybe you can uh, address it. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. So uh, 
we do the nitrate reduction reaction on the acid condition. So we just use the ion chromatography to, to analysis uh, the ammonium by, yeah, directly. Yes. Okay, I think that was sufficient. <laughs> so uh, Professor Su has a question. Yeah, actually, I have a similar question, but that's more for the nitrogen because you have the balance of nitrogen. Do you do isotopic labeling or? Uh, we just right now we just use uh, the mass balance to calculate uh, the nitrogen gas. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There's a question over there. Uh, really nice talk. So at the start, you said that uh, the aim is to trap the NO molecule that essentially escapes if you do not use a porous structure. So have you tried to look at the Warburg element and the diffusion coefficient of these catalysts through the EIS data and see how that scales for the different, uh, like the porous particles and the uh, actual particles? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Uh, but uh, right now I'm not focusing on this one, but I think that's a very important issue for the catalyst part. And maybe in the future I will working on that. But right now I just uh, focusing on the material things and try to like uh, reduce the nitrate into the ammonium. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, if you, so you already have the ERS data. If you like, okay. try to visualize the Warburg element, you might get some information about the diffusion coefficient of the party like the different species uh, you already have the oh ERS you mean the you mean the uh the nitrate like a diffusion coefficient of the yeah, nitrate also yeah. okay yeah ERS that's data. that's we can do also we can calculate the diffusion coefficient by the like a side cv curves with different scan rates so we can calculate yeah thanks for your suggestion okay thank you thank you there's a question here to the left you give them a little exercise. That's good. She's tired. Thank you very much for the nice talk. So from your impedance data, I could see that the uh, charge transfer resistance and the ohmic resistance has uh, seems to have the reverse relationship. So why is that? Uh, or copper foil and oh. copper, first copper, the one that has a higher charge transfer resistance have a smaller uh, ohmic resistance. You mean you mean the the EIS uh, yeah, yeah. figures? So uh, for for the circle one, that means uh, the uh, like a diffusion control. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, this. Hold on a second. I prepare a slide for for this one. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, the the uh, EIS. Um, Bigger. So for the mass transfer control, you will have like a straight line. And uh, for the circle one, that means uh, the kinetic controls. So uh, we can, uh, because we almost use the same like, a, uh, this one is the resistance of solution and the electrodes. Basically, we use the same uh, nitrate concent con concentration and the electrolyte. So basically, this one won't change a lot. So we can uh, uh, calculate uh, the charge transfer resistance by this figure, and we can know uh, the resistance for the like a uh, structure. Say, can you say it again? So your post electrode um, seems to have similar charge transfer resistance. Yes. But have a higher uh, solution and uh, ohmic resistance. I'm, I was just wondering why. Okay. Uh, if you have like a smaller resistance for the electron transfer, that, mean, that means you will generate a larger, larger current. So uh, you can, you can ha has like a strong ability to reduce night, to generate ammonia. We can talk about is that yeah let's talk about it more okay later. okay <laughs> yeah yes thank you <laughs> i think we will conclude the discussion so uh, yeah. let's thank professor sue one more <laughs> thank time you. and that also uh, concludes our session on fair day electric materials so thank you for showing up